Welcome to part two on our series on Selena and Barnes. Welcome back, love. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> it's getting worse. The accent is deteriorating. Absolutely. Immediately. Deteriorating. Jake has spent too, too, too long on the other side of the pond. Too long in the States. He's oi. losing his accent. Oi! Oi! He's becoming an Australian oi. with a severe head injury. <laughs> Just someone who is baking too long. Um, yeah, so if this is your first episode, wrong. This is the second episode on Selena and Barnes. So go find our yeah. first episode. Wild Listen to that before you get here. to this. Yeah. And if anyone started here, they were definitely turned off by me flailing. Oi, oi, repeatedly. The funny thing is, though, we sent them to the first episode where you do the exact same, same thing. thing. So <laughs> but it's not just matter. like someone saying oi, vey, like in a British accent or an accent. It's just me saying actual words at least at least you have that um <laughs> jake do you want to j- just quickly summarize just to to remind our listeners where we're up to in the yeah, story before plot we move summary on? two um rowdy lads from uh buffalo new york had the uh, stellar idea of uh, advertising their their job at a time where it was a little bit gauche, to say the least. Um, and they made oodles and oodles of money. Um, but it's a classic tale of, of greed gone, uh, of money making turning into greed, power hunger. Um, and they just kind of like scam this family that's actually gone through one of the worst experiences anyone can go through and just like kind of taken advantage of them. Um, these are our heroes. These are our protagonists. This is who we're rooting for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Selino and Barnes made a bunch of commercials, made a bunch of money, and Selino just got suspended. Oh, right. I well, forgot. Selino like... just returned from his suspension from practicing law because of Jake's um, aforementioned impropriety. And the love Well, because, is lost. <laughs> because of the <laughs> impropriety that you committed personally, yes. Jake. Yeah. Um, so Selino has returned to the Selino and Barnes firm. And once again, Selino is the one whose father founded the firm. He's also the one who has hair, while Barnes is the bald one. He is the one who was a Marine, and Barnes is basically the bad cop in the good cop, bad cop routine that Selino and Barnes have, both in the courtroom and also kind of in real life. Let me just say up top again that my main source for all this information is an Intelligencer article, which is called Inside the Breakup of Selino and Barnes. That's where I got the majority of my information, but check the sources for the, uh, or check the uh, description of this episode, and I will have a list of all the sources that I used to Can gather I just say this that Intelligencer is one of like the dumb like mid aughts kind of name it is it feels like an off like an outgrowth of the type of it's like, like a tinder for people who are really annoying yeah it's <laughs> kind of like that like pupper type shit or it's like pupper. like small bean <laughs> my, type shit where my it's like, son did an intelligence or <laughs> yeah it's, it just feels very much of that era yeah annoying article name but honestly they had a ton of good information mm-hmm. in there i believe it Um, Yeah, so this is Steve Barnes talking about his partner in an affidavit. Mm -hmm. He says, quote, I did not foresee the drastic effect that suspension would have on Ross. And when he was finally reinstated from his suspension, he was a changed man. The friend and co-worker that I knew did not return from the suspension. Rather, a drastically altered and affected Ross returned and withdrew from his prior roles and duties with Salino and Barnes. Mm -hmm. Barnes would go further in an email to Salino. It is ironic in the extreme that you have become so bitter toward me, the one person in your life who made sure that you were welcomed back to share in the bounty of this incredibly successful firm, the management of which you abdicated years ago. Well, I mean, I have to imagine that you can't help but return as a bitter man once like, you realize that it was entirely arbitrary, the reasons why you were suspended while your partner was. And I can't help but imagine that... like you would just feel somewhat slighted for having to like bear all like the brunt of the responsibility. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't even know exactly what bitterness um, Barnes is even referring to, but it is also a little bit justified that like, yeah, yeah, that Selena would be annoyed that like he was punished for like what, what, him and his partner were both It could doing. be Barnes is just projecting a frustration that he no longer is, like, the sole, like, runner of this operation. Yeah, and it also was a while. Like, this was a year and a half without Salino, so it, it sort of makes sense that he would come like, back. Oh, and now I have to share responsibilities with this guy. I don't a get to different call the dynamic. Yeah. yeah, this guy who hasn't been doing anything 
for a year and a half because he wasn't legally allowed, allowed to practice to. law. Yeah. Um, but according to Salino, Barnes spent months refusing to add Salino's name back to the firm again, even after he returned. That's petty. That's that's petty bullshit. All right of there. this you're gonna see is quite oh, petty. Oh, <laughs> I live for the drama. Is, Spill the tea. Yeah, too messy. Too, too messy, messy queens. Bitches. Yeah, queens. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> queens is the preferred nomenclature. <laughs> Although, at this point, he was rarely working on his own cases and once claimed he felt guilty about making $8 million a year, Salino maintains that he never abdicated anything. Man, I would feel so guilty if I made $8 million a year. He Ah, insists that he still did a lot of useful work for the firm. To give you an idea of how different their personalities were, while Barnes was mad that Salino had abdicated his duty, Salino (laughs) was basically mad that Barnes wasn't smiling more. Quote, I enjoy coming to the office and interacting with the staff and attorneys, Salino chastised Barnes in an email. (laughs) When you come into the office, you appear to remain in your office and rarely come out to talk to anyone. Another it's such a weird thing to complain he's about. He's just like mad friend. that Barnes is being a grump. Yeah, why? You, like, turn that frown upside down, man. Come on outside. Such a dumb <laughs> thing to complain about in your million dollar business. <laughs> uh, another source of tension was the posse that Barnes had established for himself in Salino's absence. Daryl Ciambella, the marketing guy who the firm brought in in 1997, had grown close with Barnes during Salino's absence, and Salino felt that the two had always sided with each other and shut down all of his ideas. There's some jealousy here. In the words of one of my favorite philosophers, jealousy, turning snakes into the sea. (laughs) Turning through sick. Yeah, and it got really tense when uh, (laughs) Salino saw that Ciambella was taking Barnes's dress off now. I just gotta call a cab. It was killing him. Uh, there was also Barnes's girlfriend, Ellen Sturm. Uh-oh. Salino claims that she was openly disparaging him to the other lawyers, and in an email to Barnes, he wrote, When you approached me about having Ellen join the firm, you assured me that your relationship with her would not interfere with the management of the firm. The same statement was made about your brother. To your brother's credit, he has not interfered with the operation of the firm. The same cannot be said about Ellen. Truly, they were the Beatles of the lawyer advertising. (laughs) Ellen Sturm was like the Yoko of herself. They are Yoko. Everyone's got a Yoko, yeah. Uh, Don't let the drama fool you, though. This was an incredibly lucrative period for the firm. In 2009, they launched a new campaign that stated, When asked which law firm they would hire in an event of an accident involving injury, four out of five Western New Yorkers chose Salino and Barnes over other law firms. Well, of course, because this is, I think, at least, uh, maybe I'm just speaking from personal experience, I think this is when most people were exposed to their ads outside of, like, upstate New York. Like, yeah, this is when I remember fully first encountering. Selena this is like where it's like a statewide sort of phenomenon. Yeah. Um, in an email to Barnes, CM Bella, in an email to Barnes and CM Bella, Salino wrote, "Years ago, we did not have the assets to flaunt, and we tried hard to flaunt those attributes by carefully choosing our words." This is a tricky quote to unpack, but basically yeah. what I think that Salino is saying is, wow, amazing. Our ads used to be bullshit, but now we really <laughs> are the best. Could you just re, re, could you, to use it lawyer speak, relitigate that quote for me once more? Years ago, we did not have the assets to flaunt, and we tried hard to flaunt those attributes by carefully choosing our words. Well, it's so funny that they said carefully choosing our words because they didn't say anything. They chose no words. They said that they were the injury attorneys. That's all, but not that's true. not true. <laughs> it's fully untrue. They didn't choose anything. They chose their words carefully, but it's not. It was never based on truth. Well, I mean, now they're free to just be like, "We are number one," because we are number. At this one. point, they are number one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm speaking of them expanding and moving beyond Buffalo. Satellite offices were opened in Rochester, Melville, and Garden City, Garden and City. of course, New York City. Yeah. In 2012, they bought a new phone number, 800-888-8888. This cost them $1.8 million. Wow. Uh, I was going to say, is that... I mean, I guess that makes sense that that's how much money it would 
cost. I, I guess it depends if you know who is trying to purchase your number, you could like jack up the price. But I get yeah, that's like I didn't really look into who they're purchasing it from. Yeah, I don't know exactly what how it works. Like. Um but anyway, it wasn't a ton of money for them because a few years later the firm would be spending twelve point six million dollars on advertising. I was so gonna like, say, they have the budget to do buy I this remember number. them doing like a uh, And it's worth it to get an unbelievably memorable number. I remember them I think like doing some spot like um, on like local TV immediately after the Super Bowl or like some I, I, I don't know I remember some Super Bowl adjacent story with them or maybe yeah. I'm imagining I, I don't know but I didn't read about that specifically but I wouldn't be surprised if they bought yeah. like a Super Bowl spot I, I don't think they bought a Super Bowl spot but I think it was like like it was I'd be on, less like, surprised I'd be a, even less surprised yeah, if yeah, there was yeah. a spot that was right after the Super yeah. Bowl yeah um, so for their new um, for their new number, they kept their old jingle, but to composer Ken Kaufman's dismay, they hired one of his competitors to record it. <laughs> and then to further twist the knife, they added fake strings, which Kaufman is very obsessed with and it, very bitter about. Do you have a pull quote from Kaufman about his disdain for fake strings? You know that I do. Perfect. Look how they massacred my boy. That's the quote. No, that's not the quote. Um, Kaufman told Vox. Why Steve Barnes didn't call me, only my competitor knows. My competitor alleges still to this day to be the writer of the jingle, and that is a false allegation, okay? It's something that I have to have out with him one of these days. Perfect. I guess that's not necessarily about the fake strings, but... <laughs> but it is fully a pull quote from Mr. Kaufman. I think he's the only true protagonist of this story. He's the only likable character I do here. love this guy. Um, so why don't we watch this 800-888-8888 commercial, the one that we all know and know love. Know and love. Let's go. Savino and Barnes, injury attorneys, 800-888-8888. Don't wait, call eight. It's the perfect commercial. It is. It's two men awkwardly like a bunch of goobers swaying back and forth. Awkwardly standing next to each other. Bear in mind that these men do not Hate really each like each they other. They despise at this each point. other. This yeah. is nineteen seventies Beatles. This is Abbey Road Beatles. <laughs> um, and it's so funny that you pulled that. Uh, what was the name of the guy who like did the first televised lawyer commercial or whatever that we watched? Oh, his name was Morris Bart. Morris Bart, of course. How could I forget Morris Bart? But they they definitely internalized lessons from him. Instead of, like, they've updated and revamped the um, when you call me, the call is free or whatever to don't wait, call eight. They've learned the lesson of a short stinger that rhymes. That's all you need. It's a number that you cannot forget. Because it's all eights. It's a catchy jingle and it's don't wait, call eight. And there, and I think just like the absurd awkwardness of the commercial, honestly, it, it like helps make it memorable. What was Kaufman saying about like echo, echoic memory, echoic memory versus iconic memory? Like you strip away the iconic memory so that all there is is the echo. Well, honestly, them standing next to each other awkwardly is iconic. Iconic memory in a way, but like it's very minimal. There's not a lot going on visually. It is. Kind of like an yeah, well, Apple the commercial where the they strip away. I would say is what makes it easy to remember. Yeah, you you give them less to look at, so all they have to remember is maybe one image and that song, and that's it. And that's why it works. Right, right, and that's why we will know Salino and Barnes's phone number until we die. When I have Alzheimer's and I forget the name of my children and loved ones, I will still probably be humming this jingle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, hey, Jake, our. Oi! Are you are you a cute girl at the bar? Doesn't sound like it. But anyway, you're Fucked about up. to get some numbers. I wrote jokes. I'm literally leaving. We Peace. know from court filings that in 2017, Selena and Barnes bought 45,000 television ads and 15,000 radio ads every month. Jesus. There were also 600 billboard and bus stop ads and lots of online advertising as well. I don't remember the adver online advertising Yeah, I haven't so really seen... Any online ads? I, I don't I've have definitely any for us to look at today. Ads. But yeah, yeah. Um, and their efforts earned them 55,000 phone calls a year from potential clients. I was going to say, um, that seems like too many. Yeah, so real quick, I would like to just show you some of these billboards because yes. it is an important part of their marketing. Um, I will come over. They are, you know, they're billboards. They're not particularly interesting to look at, but... 
And then, of course, the, 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 OG. the OG. Okay, that's, that's really all I have to show you. I just, I do want to briefly talk about the billboards because, and we touched on it when we talked about their first commercial because it basically just is a slow, like almost is a showcase of zoom their billboard. in on the billboard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, their billboards, just like the commercial, are absurdly simple. It's usually just one or two words, like injured, question mark, car, car accident, accident, question mark. I was surprised two by goofy men, how many then, of them were solo. Yeah, well, those, I have jumped the gun a little bit, yeah. are for when they break up. For when they went solo. Yeah, when they yeah those, are, those solo are their acts. solo projects. This is... But you can see that they maintain the same type of formula for them, which is just like, only now it's one doofy man, and it says... Well, yeah, it's not like <laughs> Lennon and McCartney and started doing number. entirely different music once they broke up they were still lennon and mccartney they were just doing their shit solo exactly um so once again they were getting fifty-five thousand calls a year from potential clients and keeping up with such an insane volume of cases is no easy feat so the firm designed a unique business structure and i'm actually shocked by how ahead of its time it is because it basically feels like how doordash or other gig apps operate i was gonna say contractors yeah there were about 60 attorneys who worked at Salino and Barnes, and they would split up the days amongst each other. One attorney would field every call that came in on a given day, and then would uh, get to keep all of the viable cases. A different attorney would get the next day, and so on. Oh my god, this the, is so fucked. The attorneys at Salino and Barnes were basically independent operators who got to work under the auspices of the prestigious Salino and Barnes name. I was going to say, it's almost like a McDonald's or a, a Burger King that right. lets you franchise. It's sort of like a franchise. Yeah. They just get to... Utilize the name, the branding, name recognition and of Salino and Barnes, and then like work on their own cases. Which I mean, of course, would be how it has to work because Salino and Barnes cannot, cannot possibly personally cases, do all of this. But they take a cut off the top of every case. Exactly. Yeah. At a typical firm, an attorney would expect to be handling uh, thirty to seventy cases. At Salino and Barnes, attorneys sometimes handled as many as two hundred cases <laughs> at one time. That's absurd. Which is a huge. <laughs> it's just how could you possibly? Why couldn't they just hire more lawyers? They, ha they they had a lot of lawyers. I mean, at this sixty. Point. Is I mean, a lot, sixty is a lot. But yeah. like. Clearly, you could hire more. And also, they're trying to save money. Like, they That's just true. want to make as much money they as want possible. They want to squeeze as much money as they possibly can out of this. Yes, and the more people you hire. They hire the least number of people that they possibly, possibly can. can. Yeah. And they're like, eh, hey, you can handle 200 cases, right? There you go. Uh, on any given day, most of the cases that came in would have a relatively small payout potential. The medium case value was just $20,000. The split went that the client would get thirteen point three thousand, and the firm would be left uh, with six point six thousand dollars. Experienced attorneys could keep ten to twenty percent of that, and then the rest would go to the firm. Barnes, yeah. Which it's a lot of money, sure, but it's not necessarily mind blowing yeah. or like game changing. But it's the sheer quantity of it. Well, actually, it, it's not just that. It's if you're a lucky attorney who happens to get a case where a client lost a limb. Uh, very lucky. That's very where lucky. the money comes yeah. from. You could be looking at a huge payout. 77% of all of Salino and Barnes's profits came from the top 20% of cases. It's Trump. I have Bernie voice in parentheses there. I'm uh, just it sounds it. more Trump. I'm so hold, hold sorry. On. I'm sorry. I, let me try again. Yeah. yeah. What? 77% of all of Salino and Barnes's... This is just a typical Jewish It was case. old Jewish just, man. Which isn't that far. That was Bernie. Keep going. Okay. It's a little bit huskier. 77% of all... So, <laughs> I have a panic attack. 77% of all of Salino and Barnes's profits came from the top 20% of the cases. There you go. I think I nailed it. Yeah. I'm just going to include that. <laughs> Cases where a client lost a limb were rare, but they were so profitable that they made the whole thing worthwhile. Quote, we would consider a leg off case to be a valuable case. Yeah. I'm just using that as an example. <laughs> I love that little bit at the end. He's like, oh, just, just for example. example. Says a former staff attorney. There could be days where only BS slip and fall cases come in and you had a bad day on intake or, or you could have a day where you get two amazing cases against a corporate defendant. It's just complete luck of who called that day. Salino and Barnes were making, according to one former attorney, an idiotic amount of money for personal injury <laughs> lawyers. I love, uh, uh, like, I love assessing an amount of money as stupid, dumb, <laughs> They were making bad. dumb, dumb money. 
Eventually, their pay would grow to more than $10 million a year each. Jesus Christ. Which and it doesn't sound like they're insane. personally handling any cases. I'm not... I think they are personally handling some, but, I mean, certainly not the majority of them. And they're not handling the two. I mean, like any CEO, any of- there is a team of people below them who are doing, doing the actual majority work. Of the work. Yeah. The two lawyers were living like minor despots. Despots, is that it? Despot, I think, works. Anna, is despot how you pronounce it? Oh, fuck off. It's despot. It's, it's despot. I nailed it. Yeah. Barnes had... <laughs> Don't doubt yourself, King. <laughs> Barnes had a lakefront house and his own jet that he personally piloted. Salino bought a golf course and started working on building a retreat on the shores of Lake Erie. Wait, which of them bought the plane? Barnes bought the plane. <laughs> He's piloting it personally? He is. I know which one's dying. <laughs> Uh, Salino's retreat has been described as everything from a house to a compound. Compound? So it's either, Blackwater! Either he's a rich dude or he's Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> he's Eric, uh, he's, he's Eric, Eric Prince. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, although Salino had big plans for his compound, Barnes was the one who was more ambitious when it actually came to the firm. He wanted to open an office across the country in L.A., Salino felt that this was more trouble than it was worth. He only agreed to be involved the bare minimum amount that it took for his name to remain on the door. Meanwhile, Barnes poured millions of dollars of his own money into the project. The LA office opened in 2014. San Diego and Oakland were to follow. I would have started in San Diego. Best weather in America. If I could just open an office there, why wouldn't I? Sure. That's, I was, that's not even a bit. That's just me giving you all good I mean, advice. I think it's, to San it's Diego. The, the main thing is like the quantity of people. I mean, I think it's just that like LA is More incredibly densely, densely packed. packed. Which so you makes put sense. a billboard up, you have an office See, outside is, of a hospital, you're going to get more eyes on it. This is why I'm not making millions of dollars. I don't, I don't got that Because you just want to have nice sunny weather. I just want to live in San Diego with the beaches. Yeah, I mean, they started in Buffalo, New York. So, like, really, I think almost anything is an improvement for them. Except for your uh, home country of the UK, okay, which yes. is notoriously... <laughs> Oy, gov, it's... Is, it's cloudy! I'm trying to think of what UK slang for rain is. But I can't think of anything. It's pizzling out there! A spot of piss! <laughs> In 2015, in a series of emails that scream, I've been thinking about this for a very long time, Salino popped off at Barnes. Popped off. Salino wanted an amicable split. He proposed that he maintain control of the Buffalo and Rochester offices while Barnes would take New York City. He wrote that Buffalo and Rochester are stagnant at best, while New York City is taking off like a rocket ship, which seems fair, honestly. Yeah. He continued... I have about 15 years left of my career. I feel a need to control my destiny. I have experienced it somewhat in the golf course business, but the (laughs) profits are not there to get excited about. You too have experienced a sense of freedom with your California operation, and I'm sure you enjoy 100% control. Barnes was not having it at all. Why? I totally disagree with the concept, he fired back. He's in love still. He wants to make it work. He later emailed Salino's wife, Anna Marie Salino. I had a difficult meeting with Ross. During that meeting, he told me he wanted a divorce from me and other (laughs) things that I consider to be less than rational, given the fact that the firm is doing better than it ever has. It's just... Come get your mans. Come collect your mans. <laughs> Barnes said, yo, this yo man. Whose mans is this? <laughs> this exactly. Yo man's trying to divorce me. <laughs> Fellas, is it weird when the homie tries to divorce you? <laughs> Sound off in the comments. Divorcing your homie is a feminine trait. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. Why are you as a man, man trying to divorce your, your homie? Law partner? <laughs> um, Eventually, the two graduated from passive-aggressive emails to full-blown screaming matches with each other in the office. Hot. That's, some, that's gonna lead to some hot sex. Employees right remember Barnes yelling, Why the fuck would you want to fuck this up when we are making $10 million a year? This was especially awkward, considering that the staffers overhearing this argument are were not making $10 million a year. Not making $10 million a year, and we're also not being given health insurance. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. The, the only source that I can find uh, with any sort of in-depth discussion about the lack of employee benefits at Salino and Barnes was the New York Post. Normally, ah. I would not <laughs> Love wipe it. my ass with this publication, but... Whatever, here we are. I suggest that you simply treat this next toxic workplace section like juicy, juicy gossip. Yes. 
Page six, let's go. <laughs> Apparently, Selena was open to matching employees on their 401k contributions and to providing health insurance, but Barnes was the one who was staunchly against it. From what I know of their personalities, this does actually track. We know which one of them is going to wind up. Wait, which one said that they're not matching sal- salaries or anything Barnes. like that? Barnes. Barnes, which one dies? Barnes dies. <laughs> okay. I was going to say Barnes was a... Barnes had a clear path to the presidency until he died. That is a good point. Yeah, Barnes is absurdly ambitious and ruthless. Yeah, if any one of them and could have been president... And if it weren't for gravity... <laughs> thank God for gravity. <laughs> um... In Erie County Supreme Court filings, senior trial attorney Gregory V. Pajak said, Ross wants to contribute to health insurance for the entire staff, pay bar association dues, and attorney continuing legal education expenses. I am further aware that Ross had opposed providing such employer benefits, perhaps seeing the legal assistants crying when they learned of a premium increase that they could not afford or the fact that there were employees with no health insurance had an impact and caused him to change his mind. One would hope so. I am also aware that Steve remains opposed to providing any of these benefits. So it seems that they both started out opposed to any type of health insurance, but then like Selena... One of them lived out ...kind of has a heart and like decided... Uh, that he does want to give them, but Barnes, no, 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 no. Uh, Pajak also said that the company's chief operating officer, Daryl Ciambella, told him that if the firm provided health insurance, it would go bankrupt. Uh It would not be profitable. Love that. (laughs) Once again, Rossellino and Steve Barnes are making about a million dollars a month at this point, so that's obviously complete bullshit. Well, I mean, you don't know. That's all I got. You don't know. That's a good point. At the end of the day... We don't know. Let me. What does it mean to truly know day, anything? You can't really know anything. So that was the podcast. So I know you Barnes can might have been nice. Now that send I us commercials at podcast <laughs> at gmail. What is it? <laughs> yeah, we spent one point eight million dollars for podcast, podcast at gmail. <laughs> uh, dumb. This type of conduct and management style resulted in a firm culture that was far from desirable. Pajak says. Uh, An office manager named Maureen A. Napoli, uh, who also filed an affidavit on behalf of Salino, backed Pajak's claims. Ross stated a desire to have Salino and Barnes contribute to employee 401k and health benefits. Uh, This is from the affidavit. Steve refused to even discuss this. By outbursts, yelling, bullying, and in many cases firing employees, Steve created a toxic environment within Salino and Barnes. I can't believe that those boys would foster a toxic environment. That's truly astonishing to me because what I know about personal injury attorneys is that they are cool guys who are good to be around. It's true. Their interpersonal injuries were too much. Their feelings were injured. I guess I'm trying to do something with that. Yeah. No, no, no. Keep working with it. Um, yeah. Inter- so just imagine a joke where like personal injury like relates inter-personal. to interpersonal, like emotional injury and that I nailed it. And then also imagine that I got the Bernie voice correct you on the did. right try. We'll, we'll on the just... first try. And then imagine that I didn't just fuck up my words there two seconds ago. Insert And then also Bernie I, that voice. I was confident about how to say despot. Have the TikTok lady do the Bernie voice. No, TikTok. can TikTok lady do a Bernie voice? I think she would just say, Bernie voice. Perfect. <laughs> I nailed it. I redeemed myself. <laughs> All the mistakes were worth it to get to this Put moment. chariots of fire music under this. <laughs> <laughs> More conflict between the two lawyers arose when Salino introduced the idea of bringing his daughter, Gianna, into the firm. This didn't seem unreasonable, considering that Barnes' brother and girlfriend were both, were both already employed at Salino and Barnes. Plus, Salino's brother-in-law and nephew were around too, so why did Barnes decide to take a stand on this particular relative? Well, when later asked about his refusal, Barnes cryptically replied, To me, the business model was not one that allowed for that. Well, that's the thing with these <laughs> fucking freaks, is that when, like, they are so motivated by challenge they don't know how to operate without any struggle so they will find 
asinine, irrational ways to manufacture some sort of like conflict because they simply don't know how to exist outside of that state. They they just need something to like rebel against or or act as an antagonist. So if there isn't one naturally, especially when you have an obscene amount of wealth, they'll just manufacture one out of whole cloth. Yeah, I guess when you get to like twelve million dollars a year, like more money is not a. Um enough of it's a not a motive you can already do whatever you want like you can already build a this guy is literally yeah like pilot said, a plane build your own golf courses like, like they're literally playing level, like just like they're arguments. playing sims already with real life <laughs> so they gotta find a way to and you it's can't just, just light your you family have to have on, every day to pass the time yeah you can't light your family on fire you can't drown everyone or like have them like can't locked in a bathroom ever so move you, the ladder from the swimming pool exactly so you're like what if I yelled at my best friend for like doing something that I've done five times? What? Let's see what's going to happen here. <laughs> let's try to bump up the difficulty. Someone who knew both of the men speculated that Barnes felt like he had done Salino a big favor by allowing him back into the firm, and that now Salino was trying to turn the firm into his own personal empire by laying the groundwork for a line of succession to his child. This doesn't really seem like such a bad idea, though, considering that at the time there was no succession plan in place for if Salino and Barnes weren't around one and day. And didn't Salino already inherit the yeah, business from his own father? His, his father, Ross Salino, is the one who started it. Perfect. So. Despite Barnes's clear objections, Salino persisted. He suggested that his daughter Gianna come aboard, but that her salary and bonuses, along with those of Ellen Sturm and Richard Barnes, would be excluded from the firm's profit-sharing agreement. Wait, I'm just now putting... It's Gianna Salino? Yeah. That is very much... Uh, that's not a Buffalo name. That is a Long Island name, Gianna Salino. I'm surprised that... Where was she raised? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I assume Buffalo. That's where he's spending most of his time now. Bizarre. That's I think not they're right. Italian. I was going to say, but that's, they're not from Buffalo. <laughs> I disagree with the premise of this. You didn't do your research, right? I think we've gotten to the weird grandpa racism portion <laughs> of the episode. It's like some some type of I'm bringing ethnic back, prejudice that you I'm have bringing that back I'm struggling to racism. even understand. <laughs> Um, so honestly this stuff about the profit sharing agreement i don't really even know what it means but it doesn't matter obviously barnes was not going to be into it salino also wanted to have control of marketing at the buffalo office recently a competitor had emerged oh william matar i do not know this name not a real competitor he had a slogan heard in a car call william matar oh fuck oh fuck that and shit is good even worse he had a memorable phone number 444 4444. That's literally half of eight. <laughs> Holy shit. For Salino, this was like when you put a mirror in front of a feral dog. <laughs> His instinct was to attack viciously. In Salino's words, the desire to beat him down overwhelms me with daily thoughts. <laughs> Damn, man, can't believe this guy went to fucking Kuwait. Doesn't seem like no, that guy. No, that's Selena. This oh. is the other one. This is my, they're both. They're both blood just psychopaths. Just when you start to feel they're bad. They're beige for, lunatics. Just when you start to feel bad for Selena because of the constant rejection from Barnes, you get reminded that he too is absolutely psycho. Like, that is, I can't imagine having that level of bloodlust for, like, you could kill a member of my family and I don't think I could conjure up the effort or energy necessitated to, like, think of you daily. Yeah, well, I think that is the difference between, like, the insanity of Selena and Barnes is that Barnes is, like, outwardly aggressive and grumpy and mean, whereas, like, Selena is, like, an internal, like, I, schemer. Like... That's like literal like serial killer behavior when you're able to like present yourself as an outwardly facing like normal human being. But on the inside, you are like ra like rapidly and all like at all times consumed by like thoughts that you cannot extricate yourself from regarding like harming others. Yeah. Um, anyway, do you want to watch the Absolutely. commercial that made Matar, Selena suicide? Her not Nicar. suicidal, made him homicidal. Sidal. And then I don't know what else he was capable of. Hurt in a car, call William Matar. When you do good things for people, word gets around. Hurt in a car, call William Matar. William Matar! William Matar! 
that's who I'd call. We work to help car accident victims get the best possible settlement in the least amount of time. Hurt in a car? Everybody knows. You call William Tarr. We're available 24-7. If you need a fast response, call us right now. Hurt in a car? Call William Tarr. 444-4444. Dan, you want to describe that episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we just watched a commercial for William Matar. Turn the car. Call, call Matar. William Matar. Everybody know. The funny thing is, like, everyone he talks to feels has, like, a totally normal accent. Well, except I was for... going to say, it's, it feels to me like his energy is rubbing off on them and that they are <laughs> becoming William Matar. <laughs> but they're very clearly not from the same place William Matar is from. Yeah, which is a lab. <laughs> yeah. He does look like. Do you know the you you've seen Mad Men, right? Like have, the head yeah. boss, Robert Morse's character, the old old oh, man. Oh, Burt Cooper. Yes. <laughs> he looks like a melted version of Burt Cooper. <laughs> he looks like clean-shaven, melty Burt Cooper. Mm. Um but yeah, yeah, so the ad is is basically, I mean, it's it's the same formula as all these ads where you present an amicable looking white guy who looks like a doofus and he he repeats something again and again until it But it feels more evocative of the older older commercials than the Selena and Barnes ones. The Selena and Barnes ones. Yeah, he doesn't have a good jingle. No, he, he just doesn't. goes four 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 four. He has no jingle, he has no um he has he, he lacks the simplicity. He has no sex appeal. He definitely doesn't have the Barnes sex appeal has. of Barnes. I think Barnes is definitely Barnes is the one that's not bald. Barnes is the bald one. Salino is the one with sex appeal. Then okay, interesting. Um, but it does not have the the simplicity, the the cl- the clean minimalism of a Salino and Barnes commercial, which feels yeah. bizarre to say. No one can do it like them, which honestly makes it even funnier that Salino that saw felt- this commercial that's like way worse. I, that's what I was, was going like, to I say. Have to I can't man. imagine the mindset, the mind palace that has been erected in someone for them to see that commercial and be like, that is my competitor. That is someone who is coming for me. I hear the hounds barking at my <laughs> heels. Like, I can't imagine what Matar kind of. Matar slouching toward Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine the kind of. Bizarre... Slouching toward Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to make that the title. (laughs) Slashing towards Buffalo is the title now. Congrats, you made it. Um, But like, I can't look upon my work, see mighty and despair. Uh I just can't imagine the law offices of Ozymandias. Ozymandias. I can't imagine someone who like, I just what they see the world in a way that is impossible for you and I to see it. Like, we will never be able to like put ourselves you got to walk a mile in someone's shoes and I, those shoes are just way too big for my feet. I'll never be able to fit into them. <laughs> it's just not, not for, I don't get it. It is. I mean, it's just hilarious that like the facade that they're all trying to put on is like, once again, I keep going back to this is like, ju- they just want to look friendly and approachable, but like they all just want to kill each other and themselves and just like take as much as they possibly can. They want to inflict as much and pain and like take as much blood as is possible. Uh-huh. <laughs> as are, soon as the cameras are rolling. They're bloodthirsty demons. They're goblins. <laughs> they're literally demons. Um, so anyways, Selena wanted to take over marketing for Buffalo um, and a lot of other stuff. Barnes was not receptive to any of Selena's ideas. Yeah. Obviously, this is the dynamic that would continue for months. They communicated pretty much exclusively through Through email email. at this point, that's right, Uh, since they could not control their tempers in person. In one of these emails from March 2016, Selena wrote, You were the one that drove a stake in my soul when you said to me, Ross, why the fuck are you quibbling over nickels and dimes when I literally gave you millions of dollars? I did not have to take you back. There's this... Is that it? That's actually the quote? Oh, yeah. That sounds so, like, I could not write parody that more, like, explicitly evokes the sense of two lovers who have who have loved and shared a bed together <laughs> and shared, like, the deepest, most intimate moments humans can share with one another and feel, felt like, spi- like, those are people who have explored each other's bodies. There was love here, yeah. is what's clear. And do you want to hear Barnes's reply? LOL, LMAO. <laughs> As to this bullshit about driving a stake in your soul, you want to thank your lucky stars that you had and have me as a partner instead of some cocksucker who might have taken a different view of things. Jesus. And there are a lot of cocksuckers out there, Ross. 
I didn't hear you objecting to the way I was running the place during the 10 plus years that by your own admission, you were doing nothing. That, I mean, obviously calling someone a cocksucker is is hashtag problematic, yeah. but there is, <laughs> like, there's a sexual implication there that I think subconsciously is worth exploring. <laughs> there is some psychosexual stuff being shared between Selino and Barnes, and I'm not trying to, like, no, make hun- funny, really ha-ha, gay fanfic. Barnes like, I genuinely Selino's think there is... Selino's wife and literally complained about Selino wanting a divorce. From yeah, her. there is genuinely something, and I'm, I... I cannot emphasize enough how I'm not trying to play this for laughs. There is some love and desire. There is memory and desire mixed together here. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, I think that Selino's email, like, it really reads. I mean, he says, drove a stake Staked in my, my soul. soul. This is more than business. That's Bruce Springsteen this is, shit. This is beyond money. Yeah. Um, after this, Selino had had enough. Yeah. In March 2017, He officially filed to dissolve the firm. In an email to employees, he explained his decision and shared a brief history of the firm. Over the years, it had several different names. Salino and Likudis, Salino, Bernstein, and Salino, Salino, Dwyer, and Barnes, etc. What would be next for Salino? He then invites the reader to speculate about his future. <laughs> Quote, Selino and question mark, question mark, question mark. I love inviting the reader to speculate. The email was not all so flirty and fun, though. It ended with an ultimatum. Please now allow me the opportunity to explain what I believe are our options going forward. You can join my new law firm or join Steve slash Daryl. Okay, kids, you can either go with mommy or daddy. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure how true this particular quote is, but I do love it. Salino may have encouraged employees to follow him, the first name in the duo, because, quote, no one ever calls their motorcycle a Davidson. I just think that's great. That's so cute. (laughs) That's so cute. Um, Barnes was disappointed, but understanding, and he wished Salino all the best. Just kidding. No, no. I I think you're going to just kid that just kid. I think you're going to pull the, t- the, the curtain out from under I got twice. you. Here's what he had to say. You look at the money and you look at what lawyers make in this country and you look at two Jamokis from Buffalo Jamokis who did not attend the Buffalo. Ivy League. Let's fucking go. <laughs> and we got ourselves in the position where we were making money that the highest paid partners of Skadden Earps would be extremely jealous of. Why would you choose, intentionally choose, to blow that apart? That's why the whole decision was kind of mind-boggling to me. I mean, he's not wrong. You don't have to love each other to make good, make this work. I mean, I think this gets to the heart of, like, one of the fundamental differences between, between the them. Is them. that, like, at a certain point, Selena was just satisfied. Like, yeah. that, this is just me speculating, obviously. But, like, I think that, like, after $12 million a, a year... A year. A month, no, no, sorry, excuse me, $12 million a year. A million dollars like, a month. recognizable on the street. Like, they can walk down the street and, like, people want autographs and want pictures with them. Everybody knows who they are. Which is insane they because they more are money personal than you could defense attorneys. Yeah, and Salino was just fine with it. He was done, and Barnes wanted more, and that was just, like, not a road that Salino had any interest in going down. Yeah, I mean, it's... Especially as he was getting older. And, and Barnes just... It needs to needs more, ever more. Mm-hmm. Needs to be closer to the sun, and I think I, I think I, I that is spoiled it. the heart of the. <laughs> Ooh, <very laughs> Someone nice. literally flies too close to the sun and uh, winds up crashing into the ocean. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that we have found like the 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 heart of the disagreement, the, the heart of the fable. Yeah. After this point, things got messy quickly. Barnes was not going to let the firm dissolve easily, and one lawsuit quickly splintered off into many more. Selino's wife, Anna Marie, registered her own law firm, featuring her daughters, Gianna and God Anne Marie. Bless. Is she bar is she bar certified? I think everyone in all of these families is bar certified. They're all lawyers. That's upsetting. <laughs> that's uh, that's how you know you want nothing to do with these people. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, and it was called Salino and Salino LLP. 
Ross Salino claimed that he had nothing to do with this new firm, but it sure looked like they were trying to capitalize on the breakup of Salino and Barnes. Salino and Salino, LLP, even had proofs for future advertisements that seemed eerily similar to the familiar Salino and Barnes injured billboard. Do we get to see them? I don't have them, but oh. I mean... <laughs> I can imagine. In my, yeah, I would, in my mind's eye, I would say, I'm looking at them right now. Oh, well, actually, I think I don't have them because they didn't. They were never made. There were proofs I for these I am adver- rotating these advertisements in, in my, my mind. mind. Yeah, these were proofs for future advertisements, mm-hmm. so I don't think they ever actually got to mm-hmm. uh, come to fruition. Um, Barnes sued, and Anna Marie was forced to change the name of the firm to the law offices of Anna Marie Salino. Not as catchy. No. Meanwhile, Sturm was suing Ross Salino for allegedly withholding settlement fees that she was owed from a big case. At one point, Bed Bath & Beyond sold a ceramic fire pot fuel called Fire Gel. A young man using it was horrifically injured in an explosion, and yeah, he it's died. called fucking Fire Gel, man. <laughs> Don't buy Fire Gel. That's some shit you pick up in an RPG to throw at enemies for, like, 60 damage. He died of his injuries eight years later. Oh, fuck. Never mind. I take so back that don't riff. You I take that riff back. Like Cut that asshole. riff out. <laughs> I mean, you, you aren't wrong, though. For personal injury lawyers, this means Benjamins. Yeah. However, Sturm's suit alleged that in an act of, quote, petty and vindictive retaliation, Salino refused to properly compensate her. Petty and vindictive retaliation is a good name for, like, a shoegaze band. That could also be the, the name of this episode. episode yeah. A lot of options. Um, I find it important to periodically remind myself that all of the money that built and maintains this empire flows from a spigot made of unimaginable human suffering. Yeah. <laughs> this is, of course, not the lawyer's fault. Uh, they aren't personally injuring anyone. They're except each other's inju- feelings. <laughs> um, and in fact, they are doing a useful and sometimes even life-saving service for their clients. This is not an indictment of them necessarily, but once again, I do think that we need to remember that broken human bodies serve as the foundation for any personal injury law firm. Yeah. Just something to think about. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, Selena Barnes did literally make millions and millions of do- dollars off of the suffering of others. Yeah. But, I mean, that's unique to them. That is... The only instance in that American someone has made ex- money off, off of, of harm. Yeah, yeah. There, point one other example. You can't do it. <laughs> and that's why this country's the best. Anyway, we love Barnes quotes, don't we, folks? <laughs> to him, Salino going after his boo thing was unforgivable. His boo thing. I didn't think he needed to do that, he told Intelligencer. And he did it just to... It was that old thing. How do you hurt the man? You go after his woman. How do you that hurt the was man you too love? much. That created some bad blood. I will admit that. How do you hurt the man you love? You go after <laughs> the his woman side he piece. loves. <laughs> um, these types of cases rarely end up going to trial, and this one was no exception. In 2020, Salino and Barnes reached a settlement out of court to break up Salino and Barnes. Mm. A deal for Sturms's case was included as well. Actually, it's just Sturms. No S at the end of her last name. Who cares? Out of the ashes emerged the Barnes firm and Salino Law. Among employees, Salino came out slightly ahead in the popularity contest, managing to sway a bit more than 50% of them to join his new firm. Well, wasn't she the one who wanted to offer, like, health insurance? That is true. And you would think they'll make a difference, but also the people who he's trying to sway are also lawyers. So are I'm also sure freaks. a lot of them are also have, like, Barnes brain. So Yeah, I remember when we were working at... There were people who didn't want to be on the books employees with like, who would be able to pay less in taxes. I, some people, you just, you, you never can't know. account for. Uh, it also depends on where you live because yeah. um, Selena ended up getting most of the upstate lawyers while Barnes got uh, most of the New York New City based lawyers. ones. Okay, I feel like Which that I mean, convenience paid. is a huge factor there. Yeah. Looking back on his time with Barnes, Salino said, I think we had a good partnership. We got great results for our clients but i think we can do greater things separated from each other yeah it does there is a huge difference in terms of outlook and personality that does dictate ultimately like he seems more chill i know ross is going to come out spending a ton of money on advertising but we both are said barnes it's going to be a bit ridiculous for starters seeing both of our heads up on billboards separately but that's okay people will get used to it As part of their breakup agreement, starting October 10th, 2020, the 800-888-8888, 
I don't know if that was too many or too little apes, but you get I it. I think it was 800-888-888. I think you nailed it. Hell yes. The number would be shared between the two firms for 18 months. That's absurd. Switching, How does that work? Switching between connecting the caller to Salino Law and the Barnes firm on a weekly basis. So you're literally on a week-by-week -week basis just a, a crapshoot on which firm you're getting? Mm -hmm. That's... We are recording this in October of 2021, so if my math is correct, this agreement is still in effect um, for the next six months. That is not how any of this should work. It's I, not... See, that's... The courts <laughs> do not serve anyone other than... I don't know, man. Just, like, split it. Like, that... Uh, I, yeah, I, I recommend to articulate how not useful this is for actually the purpose of a phone number. I recommend that the next time that you have a major life decision to make, instead of flipping a coin or something, uh, you should call eight and see if you get Selena or Mars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it is insane. <laughs> that's just I mean, not how phones it work. It would not make anyone happy. But I guess that's the beauty. That's of it. politics. I don't, know, I don't know what happens after the six months. Uh, what happens to that number if it just goes away or what? I was going to say, well, one of them died, but that doesn't mean the firm dis disappears. That's ex exactly. And uh, October 2nd, 2020. Uh, so we are... On October 6th, my birthday. Yeah. Just about a year after this, uh, tragically... Just one week before Salino Law and the Barnes firm were set to launch, Steve Barnes, age 61, died when a plane that he was piloting crashed near Buffalo, New York. He literally flew too close to the sun. His only passenger, his niece, Elizabeth D. Barnes, who was a lawyer with the Department of Health and Human Services, died as well. Oy. Steve's brother, Richard Barnes, who was also Elizabeth's father, ended up taking control of the Barnes firm. Today, walking around New York City, don't be surprised if you see billboards for them as well as for Salino Law. A few days after Barnes's death, Ross Salino would say, It's funny how all the crap that Steve and I went through over the past three years, all the posturing, arguing, and insults just disappeared from my mind when his plane crashed. We argued very aggressively against each other in court. That's what lawyers do. But now that he's gone, all I can think about is the good times all the milestones I passed with Steve. Despite everything that happened over the past three years, I always have considered him a friend, almost like a brother. I respected Steve Barnes. He was a great lawyer. He was my friend and partner for 25 years, someone who I spoke to almost every day. We built something together. We analyzed and tried cases together. We helped our clients. I'm very proud of what Steve and I accomplished. Well, I mean... I, I do think Salino genuinely had a love for and continued to have love for Barnes. I definitely agree with that. It's 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 for the best, I think, that Barnes is the one to pass. I genuinely believe <laughs> I genuinely believe he would have been president someday. <laughs> the, the right lawyer died that day. He ran uh, as awful, soon as awful. he ran out of challenges and he he won all the challenge medals for being a lawyer. He would have tried to level up or or tried to bump up the difficulty and I think he would have run for some elected office. Do you think he would have succeeded? Yes, abs. Are you kidding me? Yeah, of course he I would. A hundred percent. He's, yeah, he's yeah. the lawyer. Who, he's the lawyer guy with the jingle. Of course he's gonna win. The only thing more immediately recognizable to the American public is the guy who ran the game show. Is the guy who had the jingle <laughs> for the lawyer. The guy from the commercials. Yeah. The guy whose phone number I know the, already. I bet you, if you polled Americans on who they trusted most in this country, number one guy would be Jake from State Farm. <laughs> it's just I he's the guy from the thing. Like that's Jake, how we Jake all make flow ticket is unstoppable. Yeah, that's how we vote that's how we determine things in this country. It's like, oh I yeah, I know that guy. Sure. <laughs> he would have a hundred percent whatever he ran for would have got it. Yeah, so that's that's Salino and Barnes. I um I'm shocked that I didn't hear about that until today. I'm shocked I didn't know that um Barnes passed away. I'm, I, I was not, my ears were not to the ground on that beat. Yeah, people generally speaking either know that they broke up or know that one of them died. But like, who's both? They broke up and then like a week before they were 
is supposed to like officially a week before his solo album first dropped um he passed yeah he fucking ate shit in the ocean yeah so jake thank you so much for listening to uh, this is probably nearly two hours of selena and barnes content all thank together you for the information thank you for enlightening me thank you for taking me on this winding path of towards course. enlightenment and better <laughs> understanding of uh advertising culture and uh the American institutions we all find ourselves enmeshed in. Very nice. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Yeah. So sources, once again, check the description of this episode. Um, if you listen to this, honestly, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, listeners. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope you uh, had fun. Yeah. You whether whether you're a day one or this was your first episode, we appreciate you. Although if this was your first episode, stupid. This, yeah. It's literally called part, part two. two. Man. Dumbass. Think about your choices. <laughs> if you're, if you also, if you listen to all of these, think about your choices. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do too much. Or, the sweet spot is like I think you've listened to three episodes. The sweet spot I'll, is the amount of episodes. I'll listening. marry you if you've listened to three episodes of this. <laughs> any, any more, and you're insane. I any was less, say, and I you think hate me. The sweet me. spot is listening to them as they're released, which is like once every six months. Uh huh. That's the idea. <laughs> and then not in. thinking about it the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jake, people want to see what you're up to. Anything that you might plug? What do you, what do you, I wanna, mean, what do you have to say for yourself? I am literally a public school teacher, so I should not be putting my name so, or anything out here. Yeah, go go sit in on Jake's class. Audit my class at... You're going to have to bleep <laughs> this out because I will say it. Okay. Audit my class at... What, what time? What days do you um, teach? I teach... So, like, if you want to stop Always by, fun to, to put your career... Public, to dox in, in yourself. Of like, <laughs> a freak who just did, like, two months of research on Salino and Barnes. See, my phone number is five. <laughs> so this is some mutually assured destruction. Perfect. Now you have to edit this entire thing. <laughs> my phone number is 888. 8888. <laughs> Um, if you actually want to follow me on Twitter, although God forbid any of my students finds this, I am at Aaron Berkowitz, like the 18th century politician. Um, if you are a student who finds this, uh, make sure you're putting your work in your folder and I'll grade it on uh, Friday. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, we also have another podcast, which is First Film. Um, where we review uh, uh, a director's filmography specifically through the lens of their first film. Um, and not to jinx us, but hopefully um, in the nearish future, we'll have another episode coming out on uh, the, one of the Farley brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Dan Feingold. That's about it. Feel free to email us any episode ideas that you might have, whether it's like something you want me to research, do a deep dive into, just or like just random insane commercials watch. that you want our take on. Commercial yeah. Boys Podcast at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Once again, thank you so much for listening. And uh, good day, mate. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, wait, real quick, let's call 888 to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you still recording? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm pressing one. Your call may be recorded. Please press 1 to speak with a live representative. Hello, thank you for calling the Barnes Law Firm. I'm your call. Ah, okay. See, I, I was just wondering if I would get Salino or Barnes this time around. Uh, sorry to bother you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Barnes it is. It's a Barnes week, ladies and gentlemen.